Hello and welcome back to History Talk, the talk show where we talk about history. You know, the title's kind of suggests that. Today we're going to be talking about Northern Ireland and the Coleraine controversy. So let's go ahead and dive in. So why exactly was there a need for a second university? Well, um, after Labour introduced this sort of liberal war, they started giving out grants for third level edu- institutions. Uh, many, um, and they also started giving free education for second level institutions. Many of these kids that would have, you know, would have become, uh, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to reach their full potential because they would have been forced to go into low paying work uh, and they wouldn't be able to attend school because, you know, school wasn't affordable for them. Um, they are now able to attend university, and suddenly you know, there's, a, there's a massive need for a university because you know all of this sort of thing is becoming a problem because the university that, that Northern Ireland do have is not really able to keep up with you know the amount of students it has. Second to that, there is also a need for education in technology areas. So this is an this basically is is kind of a thing that some universities just don't have. Even in the modern day, some universities just don't have certain departments. Uh, they just don't. They don't teach that there, and that becomes a problem in Northern Ireland because they're trying to attract foreign investment. But to have foreign investment, no one wants to come to Northern Ireland and have foreign investment and then have to say and source workers from abroad. So they they so instead they say, well how about we train up people in our universities so that they're um, able to be trained in, in, in the in the technology industries so that if we attract investors we can say to investors, well look, we've got a highly skilled workforce, you know, and you can employ people locally and, you know, they're they're there. There's no need to be bringing people, and there's no need to be fearing that you know that you won't have to have that you have to wait, or you won't have the workforce required. Furthermore, this is actually set out by the Wilson Report. The Wilson Report, it's actually beginning to. This is this is the kind of first actual government report that suggests that yes, you should have university. So they needed a university for a while before, but it wasn't the the Wilson report. Said it was a government uh, government thing that stated, well, you know, you need to have university, and that made it official. Now, Derry becomes the place that believes it it should be the place of the university. There are reasons for this. Um, the there was a very there's high neglect for uh, the northwest. So the 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 only university in Northern Ireland was all the way over in the east, which meant that all if you wanted to go to university, you had to source yourself in the east. You had to leave home. You had to set up. You had to you had to start renting in the east. And if you didn't have much money. That was going to cause problems, and that was going to cause issues, because what it meant was that some people just weren't able to attend university. They would be able to afford university, but they would be able to afford all the things, which meant once again that you were building up this sort of thing where people uh, who were from the west of the man were now affected by this sort of thing. Now, Terry suggested that it would. Um, the building of a new university would help to restore the equilibrium of Northern Ireland educationally, economically and culturally. Now, Derry was mostly nationalist and they felt that their economic development of the city was being neglected. Now, this would be backed up by quite a few things such as the building of Craig Abbott, which really not the best um, person to call a city after um, and when they decided to build the city well having it located in you know East Band Central Belfast it was well not in Belfast but near Belfast southwest of Belfast to be exact 
Um, well, not exact, sorry. Um, but that's the sort of thing. So you begin to see this kind of thing where it's like, well, you know, while, while you know, we want, we're being neglected. And, you know, they're thinking, well, you know, why, why, why shouldn't we be given this university? And because Derry is, you know, quite a big university population, so they're able to, you know, provide many students. You know, it's not like a, an area where you have some university towns where, the, you know, you've got very few students that actually go to the university. Here, there actually are multiple students. Um, another factor is that they already had a higher educational institution, which is McGee College. Um, now, it wasn't actually a university, but it was a college, it was a th kind of a higher education institution. So they said, well, why not just convert McGee into a university? That would cut costs on actually building the university. Now, the main area of McGee was theology, but the college had expanded over the years to provide a broader range of subjects. However, McGee was not a university, and as such, it couldn't actually award degrees. But it did have an arrangement with Trinity College Dublin, whereby students could complete their degrees at that university. The college remained small, however, and then by the 1960s, it was suffering from a massive lack of income, cramped conditions, and declining student numbers. So, there are also other places that are suggesting that they should be selected for the university. So, the Lockwood Committee is appointed in December 1963, and it is chaired sorry, by Sir John Lockwood. It consisted of seven men and one woman, so sexist, and four of these were from England, and while four were from Northern Ireland, that is still not really the best. Well, the reason, of course, behind the English members was because they had actually, they were, three of the English appointees were actually academics, they were from other universities, and the problem was that out of all these seven people, where you've got an almost, around, almost 50-50 split in the religion, you have no Catholics, which is a problem because unless you've got people who are impartial, you know, who are Protestant, who are impartial, that don't take their own religion into account, don't take their own political views into account, then that is obviously going to cause problem. The local committee, it's deciding to, well, really decide whether to build the university or to expand the current one. So they decide to not expand the, you know, first one as it is getting a little too, that would make it a little too big and it would encroach upon other areas and it would be better to build a new university. Now, they had to look on what exactly they would choose to be the place the university would be in. There are four main locations. Um, Derry, Coleraine, Armagh, and Craig Avon. Now, <sighs> Armagh was near Belfast. Its population was relatively small, and basically, what their idea was that if you are from Armagh, you may as well just, you know, go and just make the commute to Belfast and go to the university there. The new city, which would become Craig Avon, it was discussed as a location, however the building work had not yet started and the project was pretty much too close to Belfast as well. It was not given out, uh, as far as we know, that they took into account the fact that that would be a fairly large punch in the face to Catholics to say, well, we're building this new city. Yes, it's near Belfast, east of the Ban. Yes, it most likely will be mostly Protestant. And yes, we're naming it after 
a unionist pre member, unionist leader who is, you know, not the best well known when it comes to the old uh, equality. So that isn't apparently what made them decide not to choose Craig Avon, but that wasn't what the one that was chosen. So instead, they knocked it down to two categories Derry or Coleraine. Now, Coleraine realized that they would need to put some work in. So they decided to give two potential sites for the university. They explained that there would be multiple student accommodation available uh, near in the near sea ta seaside towns of Port Rush and Port Swart, where hotels could be used as students' residence during the off-season, which was, of course, when students were attending university. The town's location was near the coast. The River Brown and Loch Ney would benefit from the establishment of a marine biology department, which was planned for the second university as one of the things that was required to well, really expand into the new age of, well, education. The dairy proposal was relatively poor in comparison. They emphasised the potential of McGee College for the basis of a new university in contrast to Coleraine. However, the Lockwood Committee found a number of disadvantages in, Der in Derry's proposal. There was no actual site for the university identified. There was not enough detail provided on student residence. And it seems the students would be mostly accommodated in rented rooms and private houses. Which, of course, in modern day, many students are because there's enough affordable housing, so they're forced to pay top whack for student accommodation that is essentially just what you pay just for a for family home but they have to share um so obviously sometimes you if you're lucky enough you'll be able to get student accommodation but a lot of the time you'll just end up having to share with fellow students in an ordinary house or in an ordinary apartment now on visiting McGee College, the Lockwood Committee identified very poor communications between teaching staff and the governing body of the college. McGee College had a Presbyterian ethos, and the committee was concerned that this could cause difficulties if McGee was to become the second university, as students from all religions and all backgrounds would be attending. Based on the poor communications, and the fact that they might cause tension, they decided to not select Mickey College to be available for the second university. However, they still attempted to keep up the pretense that they were uh, allowing Derry a chance. However, there was still no way for people to be given proper student accommodation, so student accommodation would have to be built. And then came a damning meeting in May 1964. Some industrialists uh, voiced their opinions that they considered Derry to be too isolated a location to set up business, which you could argue is a bit weird, but that is what they believed. So that put the final nail in the coffin. And the Lockwood Report was published. And we'll look at what was in that Lockwood Report next time. Thank you for listening to this, a Smithco episode of History Talk. Um, so basically, uh, well, yeah, so um, uh, if you'd like to subscribe, that, uh, that helps us, apparently. I mean, it does, yeah. I don't know why that's how it's supposed I don't really know why that's how the algorithm thing works, but you know, I mean, if that's what they say you have to do, well, I guess, you know, that's what you have to ask people to do. I mean, if you're big enough, then I guess you don't have to ask people. You know, if you've got like 2 million subscribers, then you've got plenty of subscribers. But I guess that's the problem. See, we don't have 2 million subscribers, so we don't really have the ability to, to say like, oh, subscribe with YouTube channel. Oh wait, then we don't need to ask because you know we've got a lot of people. So you know, the what I'm saying is there's still plenty of people out there who could come to the channel and who could subscribe theoretically. Um if you don't want to subscribe, um you could change your mind or um you don't have to change your mind. That's your free will. 
Um, I mean, people tend to say it's free. Uh, it is free. Yes, it is, it is free. But that that is an accurate thing. It's subscribing. As far as I know, it's free. And um, people, um, you know, it, it, it's it's. It's um if you don't want to get the notifications, you know people are like ring the bell icon and you'll always get a, a notification when we see in the video. If you don't want to get the notifications from our like specifically from our channel, all you do is click the no notifications bell and then you'll be subscribed, but you won't have to like see a message or anything like that. So you know you can subscribe and let let that channel just you don't have to watch us ever again. And you know, but you're still helping us out. It's that kind of thing. It's like you're spreading, you're spreading help. I mean, sharing. I guess if you've got a lot of friends, um, and you share it to all of them, or you've got friends who you'll share it, and then they'll share it, and then they'll share it, and then you know, then that is good to share it like that. But if not, then um, well, I mean, maybe if you've got a group chat, I guess you're in. Sharing would be nice, but um, you know, that's sort of thing. Like, you know so basically yeah yeah I'm sharing um, I liking I don't know how likes are supposed to help I mean if you do like the video I guess liking tells us that you liked it I mean I think apparently the algorithm is supposed to like that like that you're liking it and you know it's like okay so this person likes it so you know let's show it to more people but I mean maybe that's the case I don't know does anyone know I mean, for all I know, I just missed a complete thing, and YouTube just released a thing where they said, then you know, they explained the, how the whole algorithm works, and I just missed out on the whole thing. If so, then sorry, I, I, I don't. I, I mean, I, I try to keep up with the whole, um, the whole stuff, but you know, sometimes you know, you, you don't always notice all the things in, in the world. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to look at all the videos, you can do. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. All the videos, view the videos, subscribe, share, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, thank you and goodbye.